I want to thank uh, Bill Floyd, and of course, I want to thank the mayors who've taken their time uh, to uh, stop by this evening virtually, and just for us to have a conversation about, first of all, the outstanding uh, leadership that's being exhibited uh, by municipal leaders and working in cooperation with us. I think uh, we are doing as well a job as can be expected under the most unprecedented uh, times. We're in the midst of a health and economic crisis uh, that has really never before been seen uh, in this nation. And I'm very proud of the leadership that's being displayed. I'm proud of our citizens who are following uh, without too much coercion, uh, the directions and instructions and the requests that we've been making uh, from the beginning of this crisis. So with that, I'll welcome uh, each and one of you and. Um, uh, Bill, if there are things that the mayors would like to say just to begin the conversation, I'm open to that. And uh, then I'll talk more specifically about, uh, you know, what we collectively have done, uh, where I believe we are, and more importantly, how we can, over the coming weeks, if not months, uh, normalize uh, our economy and the operations of our government at the municipal and county level. So I'll start right there and just say welcome and uh, Thank you so much. I noticed the you know, president is on Mayor Hammock. Uh, thank you so much for your leadership. And uh, if there are words you want to share, I'll, I'll yield the floor. Uh, Madam Mayor from Pine Lake. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I missed my cue. Uh, thank you for having this, this town hall tonight or this mayor's meeting. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the chance for us to get together, particularly in light of what has happened over the past uh, several days. I think it's a good time for all of us to, to talk um, with, with each other and with uh, members of the public. Um, and with that in mind, uh, that's really all I have to say as an introduction. Okay, thank you so much. Are there any uh, opening thoughts or comments from the other mayors who are present this evening? Well, this is uh, John Ernst. I, again, thanks uh, to you, Mr. CEO, for your leadership um, in these trying times. And um, but uh, I, you know, we're going to get through it, and we're going to get through it a whole lot better. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and my wife really appreciate the surprise uh, fruit bouquet she received. <laughs> Thank you. No, no problem. I, you know, we. Uh, uh, we just give a little gift for for everyone for their hard work and you know and for you and your spouses out there so that you know uh, it's you know make sure everyone remembers every uh, one. So I, I appreciate you uh, mentioning that. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, I also want to say um, thank you and appreciate the phone call this evening. I think there, um, uh, as I said to someone today, you know, the situation is so fluid every day that we're um, being asked about, not only we're being asked about things that we never ever thought we would deal with as elected officials, but we're also being asked about things that um, the situation changes daily and how to react to that. And um, appreciate your um, leadership. And I, I think um, uh, Bill Floyd has, has provided some questions about some things that we um, would look to, to you for some of the answers and, um, and leadership and uh, appreciate that we actually got some um, data about the uh, number of uh, COVID-19 positive cases by zip code, which is very helpful to us and appreciate um, actually Commissioner Jester uh, uh, provided that information and um, we're, it's, it's helpful for us to have that information. And we know that our 911 um, folks have had that, but for us just to know what that looks at, looks like and um, any comments that you may have about the, uh, the overall map in DeKalb County, it would be uh, appreciated this evening as well. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. So if there are specific questions, I, I'll be honest with you, I've been on the phone except for 15 minutes since 8.15 this morning. Uh, it's been that kind of day, and uh, but it's been a fruitful day. And uh, I think the zip code, uh, Mayor Garrett, uh, data that you mentioned is very important. 
and you may have already invited her, you may have had a conversation with her, but uh, I have to compliment the work of Dr. Sandra Ford, uh, or if you had a future conversation directly with her, she is doing a phenomenal job. Of course, she was the acting uh, health board, uh, health director in Fulton. Uh, she will continue for the next few weeks, but uh, she has been an amazing source, a reservoir of information and direction. And uh, I think it'll be, a, I've been in several uh, on calls with her, but if you've not had a direct conversation with you, uh, she can really, really help you on the medical side of this crisis uh, with a high level of knowledge and expertise. So I only submit that to you. And she's very open and it's very transparent and very accessible. Uh, she presented the zip code information to the commissioners on yesterday. Uh, and that was the first time we had had access to it. And uh, it, 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 first time I, it had been made available to me. Uh, so that was very important as well. So we, you all submitted some questions and uh, I'll just uh, look and see uh, the first question, uh, unless you all have some specific question, the one that was submitted to me by Mr. Floyd, the first one dealt with uh, the federal funding uh, that's being appropriated through the CARE Act uh, that will come to the county. If you all want to start there or at some other place in the discussion. No, no that sounds like a good spot to start. We can go through there and I'm sure well, there'll be other questions. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so as to date, as of today, uh, what we have in this still estimates because uh, the, obviously the great majority of the funding is not yet uh, been received here in DeKalb County, but according to formulas and the best information our federal lobbyists have been able to generate, uh, DeKalb County uh, will receive uh, $32.5 million, 132 <laughs> $132.5 million in the CARES Act funding. Uh, we will also be receiving uh, FEMA, GEMA, and HUD funding, uh, funding uh, totaling $6.75 million. Uh, and that's good news. I hasten to add though, much of the uh, 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 policies and the details as to how the money should be used and appropriated has not yet been provided to the county. We're still awaiting the details as to how the money can be invested, how it can be distributed throughout the county and for what purposes it might be able to reimburse and or be used. Uh, and this uh, crisis is uh, unique in many ways and uh, having, as you all have, having led and lived through uh, the Great Recession and 9-11, dot uh, com burst and other uh, major economic disruptions, uh, this particular uh, pandemic crisis is very different. Uh, we are seeing, because typically if it's a weather-related event, uh, as storms or winds or tornadoes, there's a tremendous amount of damage to infrastructure, uh, public and private, which requires a, a significant investment on the government side. Uh, there's been little or no no property damage uh, with this particular crisis. The great majority of our spending is around uh, cause health care, but also the funding of uh, employees, particularly frontline employees who are dedicated and focused on providing services during the crisis. So we've not yet made any appropriations. All of this happened within the last few days. Uh, there's been no discussion at the county about how uh, which way the money would be appropriate. In fact, we don't yet have it, but that's an exp expectation that we will receive. It. Uh, Mike, I would like to make a comment. Yes, sir. This Bill Floyd, I, I, as you know, locations under $500,000, 500,000 people were not included in that CARE Act. And we have some small cities that are going to suffer some really, really, really heavy hits from this, especially from loss of dollars, but also from costs. 
And Jima, I heard yesterday was that if if you have a police car and the driver test as positive, you can get reimbursed for cleaning that vehicle. If you decide to clean all the police vehicles, that's not reimbursable. That's just additional cost, which is not covered. So I think as you go through this, it would be helpful to our cities if you keep in mind that so far, we have not been promised any reimbursement costs from the federal government at all. So is there, uh, that's amazing to me. So is there legislation expected or not? What's the current state of that at the federal level in terms of discussion in the House and the Senate, if you know? But the mayor, the, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I can tell you it was discussed for three at 3.5, uh, coronavirus 3.5 stimulus, um, and it was rejected by the Senate. It was it's supposed to be in number four. I'm getting indications that that's, again, the House is trying to put it into four. Um, you know, it's in the media, but Mitch McConnell in the Senate is basically telling states, you know, um, and municipalities that they don't want to give money to them necessarily they, because they don't want to fund uh employee pensions, at least that's what the news article talks about. Um, and so they, rather than just file bankruptcy to lessen their uh, pension obligations. Um, so the, the big battle is gonna be in stimulus for whether or not um, there's anything for cities uh, under $500,000, 500,000 people. And Patty may know more about it too. Um, I, I did send a letter to um, William Crozier today that um, our city manager put together information for us in terms of um, a city that is uh, very well run, that has a man has been very um, physically conservatively managed and the impacts on our budget and um, what we're seeing happen to, to our fund balance. And, um, and we're in a, a, a city that um, has probably more cushion than lots of other cities. And um, I you know, did hear back from Larry Hansen that he feels like that there is some White House support for um, cities. Although I have to say the National League of Cities and the um, Council, U.S. Council of Mayors and cities lobbied very, very hard to get funding in this 3.5. And they did a, a survey of mayors and were able to even show the data as connected by zip code to whether or not the representative and senator in Congress was a Democrat or Republican. And it showed that it didn't matter. It was not a partisan issue among the mayors that every city um, needed assistance because we're you know, paying for uh, essential services and we're seeing our revenues hit just like every other um, government, local government, and that with that there will be cities that um, won't make it. And we need our police officers paid. We need our, our firefighters paid, our first responders. We need to be able to have a community development um, employees so that our businesses have support during all of this. So um, the latest I think that we got from GMA is that if there is a, a, a you know, a bill for that the earliest, the earliest any um, city could see any money or um, small counties could see any money would be around the 1st of June. And that would be if the bill kind of sails through, we have no, um, the, the support for um, cities of any size was um, supported primarily by Democrats and was was not able to get enough Republicans on board with it. So we need to really push for um, this not to be a partisan issue, but an issue that is uh, supported for for all cities of any size. I think some of the uh, some of the bills that were being looked at were to help cities um, that were fifty thousand 
people and more and higher, but that eliminates um, the cab cities for sure. And so there was a, a push to say every city, large or small, is um, experiencing uh, significant impacts to their revenue side of their budgets and that expense side is still there and, and growing. And so, um, but I, I don't, you know, I don't know what, what the status of what that fourth bill might look like and um, or the likelihood of it, um, it getting passed. Well, anything that I can do in support of any future legislation, uh, you know, I don't understand the political rationale or reasoning, reasoning. I've just never been that able to discern the ideas and thoughts of our federal leaders. But I know the challenges that you are facing. Uh, you are, and I know that it's expensive and the costs that are being expended. So whatever support I can provide as the CEO, you, you have that from me. And whatever we can do to support you all, you know, I'm just one part of the governing authority, uh, but you have my support. The second question You can already answer the third question, the the second and third question. Oh, it's already been answered, Mayor Ernst. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, it's it's the questions, Bill. If you sent the same questions you sent him, um, I think you've already, you know the questions were: Will the facilities be eligible to receive some of those funds? And you you basically said you don't know yet. Well, we don't know yet, but if in fact it is, uh, obviously you know it's something that we would very aggressively support and do everything we can to uh, execute the policies as they are written. No problem whatsoever. Uh, um, would you, I guess the next question is, you know, would you consider doing your own reopening process or, or recommend that, or schedule a recommendation for all our businesses is, uh, to meet certain conditions prior to opening? You know, obviously while not enforceable, it could be a, positive message. Basically, you know, could we think about creating a uh, joint or uh, um, or have you and all of us create a joint um, uh, message on, on opening? I could see that being very positive. I, just by the way, while we've been on this call, uh, the president's press conference um, uh, was going on and he was saying he strongly disagrees with Governor Kemp's decision. Um, to reopen. So we'll see what Would that you repeat do. that? Would you repeat that, please? Uh, wait a minute. Let me that, get up off President the Trump, pre President Trump is saying on the, on his nightly press conference that he strongly disagrees with Kemp and that it's in violations of the, of the it, phase one guidelines. Right. He, what I think he's saying specifically is that Kemp made poor business choices to reopen in phase one. So I think he's challenging Kemp's decision to open things that people and people touch each other, which is basically all he opened except for bowling alleys where you just touch the ball. So, but yeah, I think that's what he's saying is that he's opening those types of business too early. So we'll see what happens. I'm sorry, I need to take a break. Can I just take a 10 minute break and come back? <laughs> I, <laughs> this is I, I, have, I can't believe yeah, it. Is, <laughs> I, I have, I, someone sent me a video of it. I, I pre pressed mute and watched it. And I, you know, I have the audio right here. It's, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you guys were, you know, I I was on CNN today, and that was my whole point: is that this thing's crazy. We have so many conflicting information; no one knows what to do. But I digress. I saw you, Jonathan, on CNN. Oh, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah I saw you. Uh, you did a great job. Oh, well, now you guys are just blowing me smoke up. I was I was okay. <laughs> 
But that, so, that te- that'll teach you not to take the president's choice when you uh, nominate and replace a U.S. senator, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> he will get even. <laughs> Sometime he will. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> you you sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Um so, so basically I think you know the question we're having or you know, thoughts possibly, and this wasn't fully vetted out by the group, but you know, can we think about maybe doing a joint? I know all our city managers, at least on the city levels, are talking with each other to figure out what everyone's doing. And obviously, we're not going to get in 100% agreement to, you know, on a full policy, you know, whether, you know, Little League starts, yes or no. You know, I, I can see where we have issues, but if we could come try to come up with some uh, talking points or a group of our conversation that we all kind of get behind. So that you know, it's a more powerful message. But tomorrow, so I think, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mayor Dukes. Go ahead. No, I I want to hear what you have to say. Go ahead, Mr. Thurman. Go ahead, Mike. Oh well, thank you. That's a, well. Tomorrow at the uh, task force meeting, uh, I will be sharing with the task force a document, uh, for lack of a better term, an executive order that focuses on. Uh, transition plan uh, with principles for DeKalb County, not details, but principles that I will encourage, I can't order it, but encourage us to follow as we transition back to a more normalized business operation throughout the county. So Mayor Earth, that is the perfect, uh, I think, uh, opportunity for us, if we can, to develop principles. Now, I, I don't think we'll ever really just get down to the grindy details but that we can develop some general principles that can be followed and appreciated, which is similar to what we had with the uh, um, executive order. Uh, you all, and when I finally issued one, I used the orders that you all had issued to kind of incorporate the principles that you all had thought were impro- important and prioritized in your own cities. So that's what uh, we'll be sharing with the task force tomorrow, something similar. Uh, now I got to take into account what happened tonight uh, with the president because this changes the game to some extent. But uh, we need to really be focused on how you transition. Uh, we met with uh, Mayor Garrett, uh, Dave Ross, and we're at the task force for global health is one of the key oh. members from the uh, task force. And what we were talking about today is the steps that should be taken. Uh, number one, obviously testing, but number two isolation, but number three, contact tracing. Those resources have to be in place in order to properly reopen a a, a county or city or state. I think that's what uh, President Trump was alluding to. And the governor, at least he hadn't shared that those resources are in place that must be in place before we reopen. And see, that's something we can take a position on as a county or sit and say, look, we know that in order to reopen these jurisdictions, there must be a plan in place to test, to isolate, and to contact trace any uh, infections that may occur. Now, Deuce, I'm sorry I cut you off, but I want you to go. Yeah, now, I, I'm hoping that when we get to the, on the last mayor's call, not this week, but last week the GMA, um, and the county version of GMA. They said, uh, the director of uh, GMA said it's too early to talk about summer. But I'm hoping when we get, as we go through the next phases of this, because we're not ready for this event, that we get Dr. Ford or public health advice on things like baseball and other things, gatherings, big and small. And I know like my, and Dunwoody tonight, the swim tennis presidents are all having a Zoom meeting to try to figure out what they're all doing. And and I think somebody from public health is actually gonna be on that meeting, so I appreciate that. But I think that we need regional guidance on some of this. Um, so that one little league isn't playing in, at Murphy Candler and another little league at Peachtree Corners isn't allowed to pay at least if we can 
do that from a public health perspective. Uh, I, I agree. If we have our uh, principals, I know the little leagues are all talking with each other and they're all itching to get playing again. A lot of them are, at least. At least Murphy Candler is. Um, and so if if we can get, you know, if we get our principals, maybe we just kind of like from the very beginning, if we get our principals, we would take that to the group, to the greater mayor's communities, and maybe we can, try, you know, try to get the leagues to all you know join in I, i'm telling Mer candler why not have summer baseball you know have uh you know what is a summer break at this point for all of us um yeah some people may not be around but i suspect our summer break is going to be a little bit different this year so it's, right i think that we uh those are all the questions those are the kind of questions that, that i think a lot of mayors not just in the cab but across the they are eager for answers about is, you know, what do we do about our events, that kind of thing. And so, and it may, again, it may be still too early, so it's almost the end of April, but what, what I would, oh, we're going to have group size limits in the summer. What does that look like? That kind of thing. So anyway, I'm waiting for public health people and everybody to figure that out. And I, I think there's still, we're still in the thick of this, and so it's hard for them to project forward. But it will be here before we know it. Like, is the county going to open their public pool? You know, that kind of thing. Well, and speaking, Dr. Ford addressed that issue yesterday at the Board of Commissioners meeting. And Ms. Dolores, can you, I think she said, as a mic, the Lord, I was not there, so I don't want to quote it, but the Lord was there. What did she say in relation to opening public pools? Um, well, to paraphrase her, she said that there were lots of high priority issues regarding COVID that she had to attend to. And quite frankly, pools was not on the top of the list. Just being transparent. That was her communication. I think she felt like there were a lot of other things that she had to address. She knows that people are concerned and want to be able to participate in activities, but it's not something that she's that's high on the priority list right now. I think her focus was on is going to be on testing, access to testing, and those kinds of things first. And she wanted us to know that eventually she'll get to pools, but not right away. Well. I mean, which doesn't she not in, uh, control pools? I mean, as, like they they themselves could shut down all pools in the county unilaterally, correct? Because the health. I'm not certain. I'm sorry, Mayor Ernest. I'm not certain of that, but I believe you're correct. That would that'd be fabulous if we could, if we all, you know, obviously she has the ultimate control and I hate to throw something at a woman that is going through a whole lot, but, or a whole lot of issues, but that she has to deal with. But if we can have her, you know, basically have the political backbone to back her up to say, Hey, you tell us when pools are open, we'll open pools. But until that, we're not going to open pools. I think you're right, Mayor Ernst. I think we have to get health department, um, uh, approval to open any pools. And I can understand why it's not on the top of her list right now, but I think that eventually um, it will be the DeKalb County Health Department that will make that determination and it will apply, should apply countywide. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think any of us are opening um, in, um, uh, in the next, uh, uh, week or two <laughs> and I'm not even sure anybody's really planning to open at all even the typical uh, Memorial Day weekend but um, I can understand that she has those other three you know priorities that she's working on right now okay uh do we know what the timing, Mr. Sia, do you know what the timing for the GMA funding for re reimbursement is, uh, GMO reimbursement funds? Do we know that, that timing? Um, Mayor Ernst, it's Dolores Crow. Yeah, we don't have the, um, typically there's a letter that we received, the award letter from GMA, and we haven't received that yet, so we don't know what the dollar amount is. 
Um, but okay. we, we check every day and we have a weekly call to talk about um, when the letters come in. To date, we haven't received a GEMA letter. Okay. Um, yeah, county projected revenue loss for the year, sales tax. I would also throw in loss as probably for all of us, one that we're wanting. Do we have any numbers yet? Well, the good news uh, with SPLOS, it depends on, obviously there will be some fiscal impact going forward, uh, but I can only speak at the county, you know, the projects for 2020 are fully funded, but how that impacts, uh, you know, the impact of this on future collections, obviously you can't project, at least not this early, but you all have seen the reporting, so, you know, the same way to read the same stories I have, and clearly, uh, in the out years, or at least in the months throughout the remainder of 2020, there will be a negative impact on collections uh, in DeKalb County in the state of Georgia. And how much or if the stimulus money, if you receive it, when we receive it, can be used to offset any losses there is something that's still to be determined. Hope we give a very uh, liberal interpretation of how much we were supposed to be earning in 2020 and 2021, if we do get stimulus. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I, I was projected a 150% increase year over year. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fair to me, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to be fair, my, Michael. <laughs> so we let me- with the rest of so, us. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I can't say just between us, because no telling who is on the worldwide way of listening to this conversation. So what are we missing? What am I missing at the uh, county level as it relates to the response, either health or economic, to the current crisis? What am I missing? I, well, the only last question we, we had was about testing itself. And I don't know if you were going to give us an update tomorrow at the task force we are on that um, and you know what what can we do as cities to help you increase uh, Dr. Ford and yourself to increase those testing levels in this county it's interesting you, you know and I talked to Dr. Ford at least every other day uh, we have two testing sites uh, obviously they're confidential but and there are others because Emory uh, is testing we have a testing site in South Dakota we have one. We have a and one in, in, in Dunwoody, but it is very quiet. It's only it's been open for a week, and they the uh, because I have a friend who's volunteering there. Some the biggest day they've had so far is fourteen. I don't quite know why that's happening. I don't know. You know, when you look, the numbers you provided yesterday show a fairly low. Uh, rate of infection in North DeKalb. And so I don't know if that's playing a role. I, I don't know, is every testing site open to everyone in the state or is it, are these just for DeKalb County residents? Well, it's for DeKalb County residents with a, okay. uh, an appointment. But Dr. Right. Ford raised the same concern that even at some of the other sites, they're averaging at most 20 a day. So there's not right. been this huge outpouring of or desire to seek testing, even though we have the second highest infection rate in the state. Right. A well, lot of the... Uh, go ahead, John. No, you go ahead. You, no, you I, go ahead. So the people I know that have had it, um, there have been a few that have been really sick and have ended up in the hospital, and there are a lot of people who seem uh, to get a uh, not a terrible version of it. And so I don't think they're seeking testing because the doctor says, stay home, stay away from people, call me or go call 911 if you start having trouble breathing. And so they're not rushing out to get tests. So that's the only thing I can figure because literally now, I mean, it's supposed to be a secret, but it's not a very well kept secret in Dunwoody because it's at a church and people can see it. <laughs> well, so I, we, I we, we, we have the exact same thing. We just this last week had something open up right on Peachtree Street and literally says Corona testing available. I don't know what their numbers are. I drive by there. It's right near my house and it's I've not seen more than two cars ever there. 
And so, the, but that was the last week, and that's through the Emory Healthcare, and it's open to anyone. Mm. And supposedly, Fred, so um, it seems like there is more testing sites. You know, I hate to overwhelm them, but is it one of the things where we maybe need to promote that there's testing sites now? Well, I mean, I, that's something I think obviously we need to consider and talk about at this level as well as at the task force, uh, Dr. Ford will be on tomorrow. Uh, they had mass testing today over in, uh, in car. So maybe we need to change the strategy, but clearly there's a need because if you look at the infection rate, there's a need, but so for some reason we just haven't been able to, you know, encourage enough people to come out and get the test. Well, I think it's also a legacy of when people did want the test, they couldn't get it. So they don't think that you can actually get it now. And there may be, you know, there at least in our area, you know, they all have not done it. And and be honest, in Brookhaven and the North DeKalb, our, our numbers are are a lot lower. And, uh, and, um, and so it, it could be that, you know, we've been social distancing now. I'm, I'm we're a month and seven days is, or a month and yes, a month and seven days right now of social distancing. And so, um, so I, I, you know, I, I think our infection rates are, 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 the spread is very low in our area at this point. I, to be honest, I feel very comfortable walking around in my area at this point. One not thing, everybody. Or that I want everyone going out right now, but I'm just saying <laughs> for those on the inter interwebs that will say that I'm being contradictory. I'm not saying that. So Hi, everybody. Can I'm not sure if you can hear me. Oh, sorry. Can you, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, this is our Iyasu with City of Clarkston, and I'm sorry I came here a bit late, but um, I just wanna um, I just wanna bring out an, an an issue that we have been facing, and I'm pretty sure which is prevalent throughout the Cap County, which is the, the um the coin operated um uh, machines that are being um that has been opened all over the gas stations and um, which are also available in stores right now. I mean, in uh, convenience stores and also restaurants. Um, and um, those machines are literally on top of each other and they have been using them so far. And I wrote a letter to the governor, which I don't think that has had any attention, but it just probably got a deaf ear, which I feel like that. but. I just want to see if there's anything we can bring to the attention of the uh, our county um, board of health um, that uh, we have to do something about these machines because they are used by different people and I don't know how much cleaning that they could do to sanitize them. Plus, they are literally on side by side to each other, which is not six feet away from each other. and. Uh, this is going to be another way of uh, passing the the virus to uh, to our community. So uh, I just want to bring that up. And another question I had is, I hope uh, if I miss this, uh, I apologize. If you, ha I have to make you repeat. But um, I would like to hear uh, what's the county doing in collaboration with cities um, on testing. I'll answer your formal question first. Uh, one of the things that Kemp's order did do, if it's still in force tomorrow, is that it transferred uh, authority to enforce the order to local police departments. So initially it was at the Sheriff's Department State Patrol, but now the enforcement part of his most recent order has been delegated to county police departments. So, Mayor, if you, uh, I'll get Ms. Dolores to reach out to you and have a more detailed conversation and arrange for you to talk to Director Lumpkin and Chief Ramos about your concern because they would now be the persons that you would make a complaint to. Thanks so much, Mr. Chief. Yeah, as soon as it uh, becomes effective, and it's effective as of Friday, I guess. So, we think. So yeah, I think it's Friday. Yeah, yeah. Unless he heeds the words so of President um, Trump. 
testing available. I think a lot of people, sorry. No, go ahead, Mayor Gary. You get ready to see exactly what I'm saying. Go ahead. Sorry, um, I, I, with respect to um, what the mayors were saying with about, about testing, I think most people are not aware that those, that there is testing available in Dunwoody and Brookhaven. And um, I mean, is this an opportunity for uh, our first responders to get tested, our sanitation employees, for people to go and um, that are on the front lines to make sure that we have a, a healthy workforce. And um, I think, you know, we, or somebody that may have uh, mild symptoms, but want to know, you know, what, if, if they do or do not, because I think you're right, um, Mayor Deutsch, if you call your physician, it's like, if you get worse, you know, go get tested, otherwise stay home. Um, but I, I think for us to have good numbers and to know what the infection rate is in DeKalb County, we need we need those people tested as well. And not just to um, say, if you're, if you're feeling okay, just do what you would do, even if you had a positive test. I think we need to know about those positive tests. Well, I, I just had a thought. So maybe that's an opportunity for the elected leaders in DeKalb County to come together and encourage uh, our citizens and residents to take advantage of the testing resources that are around the county and emphasize why it's so important. And testing becomes even more important as we move towards reopening uh, uh, businesses and the county and your local government. So I just think, and we're making a notation of it, I think, Bill, that we can work something out and maybe have a, vet, a virtual press conference just to encourage it and explain to people why they should take advantage of it. Because uh, Dr. Ford was just perplexed that there are so few people presenting themselves uh, throughout the county. CEO, I agree with that. Um, I think that a couple of things have happened. One is the criterion for who can be tested or who should be tested has changed. And I also think that we're sort of in an urgency fatigue point. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that the, uh, the the sense of, of sort of immediacy around getting tested has started to wane a little bit uh, as another part of the factor. And when we have uh, the messaging changes and whiplashes people around, then they also don't know who to listen to anymore about should we test, should we not test? What are, the, what, what are the reasons to test, what are the reasons not to test? Who's on the top of the list to be tested, who's not on the top of the list to be tested? So I think that that's a good idea to do some kind of um, a United Front press conference because I, I do feel like um, one of the advantages DeKalb County has is that pretty uniformly the leadership across the board is trusted. That is a, a message I hear over and over again. Um, we, and I think that's something that we should maybe lean into to get the testing message out. Um, I mean, the mayors are trusted, uh, the county leadership is trusted, and that's it, maybe it's time to, to invest in that uh, to use for this testing push. Because without the testing push, you know, you've heard it a thousand times now, it's a cliche, we continue to fly blind. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, we'll do that. And uh, we... We've done like a social media push to tell people the testing criteria has changed. We put it in our email blast, but I'm convinced that we continually reach the same people. We're not reaching the people who maybe need to hear the message more. And so some kind of communication strategy um, is probably part of the puzzle. The other thing is, is again, I'm not sure I think if you end up, you're so sick you go to the hospital, they test you there, I think, or they do right. the x-ray and confirm. And I'm, I just wonder if um, part of what we're experiencing is, is sort of an ebb and flow of the virus. Um, and a lot of people who had clearly had it in early March couldn't get tested. So the antibody testing is going to be the net, you know, once it's truly available, will be an important part of learning where we really are. But I do think a, a big push from the county to say, hey, uh, and we can all share it, we can do it however you want us to, but to say, hey, 
and probably in maybe a couple of in different languages too would help. So that's just my thought. Well, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, I would think DMA, we have a little bit of money saved up. We were talking about different things. Uh, and maybe the county, you know, even over the press conference, but it may even paid, paid media. Um, you know, I, I think my understanding is advertising rates right now are pretty darn low. We get, you know, we, um, in, even on CNN's and the Fox news, maybe we, uh, the Fox news anyway. Um, and we, you know, really promote it and heavy, uh, you know, all these private ones, they, they may be willing to open up at this point too. And the, the county one. But let's. Do, I, I agree 100%. CEO, let's do it. Let's do a press conference. Let's even think about spending some dollars to get the the information out. I, I think uh, I, I like the last uh, comment about using different language. Um, for me, being in, from in Clarkston, um, which is very exemplary of all the Cab County. As we know, the uh, Cab is one of the most diverse counties in the country. So I think we definitely need to uh, push uh, using different language um, in, in terms of uh, um, pushing this uh, effort. Um, in Clarkson so far, we kind of noticed that um, in some of the testing that we've been having, uh, there has been a very big uh, numbers of people from uh, Nepalese and Burmese community that are coming to the testing site, which tells me that they are either, uh, s some people have told them they have the information where the testing site is in Clarkston and um, uh, they are utilizing it effectively, or there is a prevalent uh, case going on in that community. So either way, I think we need to uh, reach out to the different communities in, our, in the Cap County. No, that, that's done. And we'll, of course, allow Dr. Ford to be the leader, and we support her in the efforts of the Board of Health. But I, it's a great idea. I'll follow up on it, Mayor. It's, it's a great idea. So I want to make sure that the county also, the health department, has the resources to, um, once we, you know, have that data to follow up with um, isolation and um contact tracing because those are the other legs of that stool that are important and so if we push out testing and we begin to see you know asymptomatic positive test or even mildly symptomatic then um, in order to um, do the next part we have to make sure that we're that the health department has the the resources both financial and um uh as well as to do the next parts that are an important part of the process exactly that's actually very uh true um we've had uh, a few calls in clarkson about people who have been tested policy but actually are going back to work and uh, um which is very alarming um so I think yeah, that's definitely, uh, we have to have a mechanism of uh, following up and uh, making sure that they are staying isolated. Well, but uh, we will definitely, and uh, let's get Dr. Ford in at our next meeting. That would be so helpful for me because you know it's beyond my uh, realm of expertise. So, uh, Bill and uh, Mayor Hammett. So, at the next meeting, let's make sure we arrange Dr. Ford to be here. You know, another thing, uh, Mr. CEO, that concerns me as I look at the the map that was provided with the zip code information. Um, the areas of the county that have the highest numbers of um, positive cases are in those areas that may be also the more um, economically disadvantaged areas and also um, areas where there, um, there may be uh, a higher number of um, African American, African American cases. And so that that's one thing that that uh, zip code map 
showed to me is that there are pockets of the county that um, need need a lot of attention and um, in terms of assistance with um, isolation, contact tracing, and um, I just think that we need to, as a county, make sure that we are attending to the needs um, in the areas that are are popping up in the county as as having um, more cases. No, you're absolutely right, and uh, there is a and you've seen the reporting on it, uh, direct correlation. And one of the things you mentioned that's key is socioeconomic. There's been no genetic link between African Americans and COVID-19, but there is a causal link with people who are socioeconomically depressed who have limited access to healthcare, no matter what the race is. Uh, obviously, African Americans are disproportionately uh, 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 found in those who are impoverished. So that's a major issue and a major concern. And uh, focusing a strategy, one of the things in the, in the document that we're preparing that we'll release tomorrow is calling on the state and local jurisdictions to develop a strategy, just as you mentioned, that addresses medically fragile population as well as uh, communities of color who may because of lack of resources. And the other issue is that uh, people of color are disproportionately working jobs uh, that are public facing. And those are jobs that, who does not afford the employees to shelter in place. Uh, the bus drivers, the people who do uh, the hands-on work every day in the grocery stores and in the meat packing uh, company, not here, but around the country, that contributes to the high percentage of people who are being infected by the disease. So it's the folk who are doing the work uh, that can't be remotely done placing themselves at risk in order to be able to feed their families. It's what the mayor of uh, Clarkson just stated. Many of them go back to work because they have to go back to work. They can't afford not to work even when they're sick, but that just contributes to the continued spread of the disease. Mike, it's Bill Floyd. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, sir. I wanted to make a comment about that, something along that line. You know, MARTA has cut back to just 40 bus routes. And I'm hearing now that there are a lot of people that depend on MARTA to get to work now that can't do that. If you have those instances in your cities or in places in the county, we need to know about that at MARTA. Uh, that, 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 that stress has been put on people. And now MARTA is being impacted incredibly. I don't know if you've seen the numbers. Our, Ridership on the trains down 75% and buses is down 50%. So uh, Marta's being hit and it's not going to look like it has for a long time. So, but if you've got people out there that can't get to work, they're focused, those new routes are focused on hospitals and healthcare workers. So uh, I know that all your Marta board members would appreciate hearing if you are having workers that are having problems getting to work. Uh, Bill, I'll send you an email, but I had reached out to the government liaison person at MARTA, whose name I can't remember, because we have a food bank that serves only on Wednesdays, and the bus was a big way people got to it. And so she said she was keeping a list, but there was clearly no bus yesterday. So if you yeah. could help us. we don't. She got, she's not asking for that bus back five days a week. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. On that. thank you, Common from Tucker. We, our city leadership had a conference call with Marta this morning, uh, specifically about the bus routes in Tucker that have been canceled, and specifically about the process and the priorities for restoring those. And their answer was completely unsatisfactory. They essentially said it's a kind of a, my words were it was a squeaky wheel system because they said it'll be based on demand. And I said, okay, how are you going to assess demand? And they said, well, we'll hear from, you know, riders who, who don't have a bus anymore, and we'll hear from cities like you who tell us whether there's an underserved area. But there was no plan, and there was no system for saying, okay, here's all the ones that we wiped off the map, and here's how we're going to put them back. It, there was, it, it was really discouraging. So it would be helpful if there was some kind of plan 
uh, published or procedure for appealing or whatever it might be, but um, they've wiped out several very significant routes through Tucker and no plan as to how they're going to come back. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I'm hearing a lot of that kind of stuff, but I mean, you understand that one thing also that we're having worker problems and, and those kind of issues too. So there, there's a lot of issues to deal with out there, but we do need to hear just exactly what you're telling me tonight. Oh, and Mike, if you're there, yeah, no. Mike Thurman, I, I, I don't know if you, he's gone, second. but Dolores, you might tell him. Yes. I yes. know Rod Frierson lost two very close friends in the last few days. He did, and I uh, think Martin I don't know whether you're aware of that or not. I am, and um, I know Marta recently lost a person yeah. as well. Uh, an employee who contracted it, and I believe his his partner also has it, but has not been hospitalized yet. So, and we've partnered with Marta uh, to the extent we could um, on some other things. So, um, the CEO stepped out just a second to get a call, um, but we also have received a few. I've received personally a few emails myself from citizens that um, need Marta to get to work. So we're collecting that and pushing it out to um, okay. Mr. Fryer. Please keep up with and that. You know, they're running, yeah. they're running twice as many buses on these 40 routes right. because they're only letting so many people on the bus. So they're running more buses, they're running more frequently, but they're carrying less people. Got it. Um, oh, can I ask a quick question that's probably a little too early, which is uh, summer meal programs that I think the parks normally serve some of them. It's the summer camp. Um, I'm just wondering um, if y'all gotten that far about summer meals for kids at all. Well, um we haven't made any final decisions. You, you know that we are actually providing snacks at nine recreation centers, uh, along yeah. with the DeKalb uh, School District. They have 20 and we're 23 or so, and we're actually providing meals, but we haven't made any decision about the camps themselves. Uh, but okay. you know, the meals are things that we are doing, and I don't see any reason why we would stop. But okay. as far as having a camp, you know, that's dependent upon right. you know, right. social you distancing and everything else. And everything else. But we are working, I will tell you this, um, you know, we have a summer youth employment program. And so we get, we're working on a strategy to try to help uh, create jobs. There are no jobs for adults, much less for teenagers. And so that's another concern that we have to trying to come up with a unique strategy to address. But we got a, a, a room full of politicians. I think all of us just tired. <laughs> yeah. I do want to say, yeah. sir, thank you to the county for helping um, house the um, homeless and um, provide some assistance to um, cities and everyone throughout the county. I think this is a um, it's a, a time that um, our folks don't want to be staying um, out overnight and um, an opportunity to provide some food and assistance. And I uh, I really appreciate the the county's assistance in in uh, doing that with um, we we had um, uh, a bus for the county pick up a number of folks in downtown Decatur uh, several evenings ago. So uh, thank you for um, your leadership and for pro providing that service for um, homeless folks. We that we want to keep safe uh, during this time as well. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, Alan Mitchell and Zach Williams have done a great job leading the effort and working with several nonprofits uh, in the uh, DeKalb and in Metro. And um, thank you for saying that. And if, if you all, and I want, you all didn't respond. So I'll ask the question again, if, and I'm not sensitive, so not necessarily tonight, but at any point in the future, if I'm missing something or uh, not properly analyzing the issue, y'all reach out to me. And I'd rather for you all to tell me than Richard Belcher. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I always tell my staff. You tell me, don't let Richard tell me, because Richard will tell me and two million other people. So, Where, so where's Richard been? I haven't seen Richard around. You can't surprise oh, anyone. No, he's been uh, over at the city of Atlanta. He's been over at City Hall the last three or four days. I keep up with him. He hasn't been over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. See, the uh, cab so, is not as much fun as we used to be, so Richard had to find good. a green of pastures. That's good. I also, to add on to what Patty said, um, you may not even know this, but your department, uh, I guess human services or something, uh, delivered snack packs to the food pantries yes. and um, for them to distribute one per person for however many days of uh in a in someone's family to supplement what the food pantries were getting out and that's very nice so i appreciate that thank you i appreciate you all and you know we work well and uh bill said something before you all got on we don't always agree but we always keep talking so that's the main right. thing we just keep talking and and to your this it's fire and it's the fire department staff i mean is there anything we should be doing to support your first responders that are within our city? Well, you know, and some things are official and some are unofficial and informal. Right. So the, the wonderful lady over in Pine Lake that's providing a lunch to uh, the first responders and sanitation workers, uh, you know, those are the things that make a big difference. Uh, you had in Brookhaven, uh, someone just put a note up telling the sanitation worker thank you so yeah. we put it in the in the newsletter so you know it's the uh soft sometime informal touches that mean a lot and you all know this uh in the midst of a crisis like we're having and mr c let me also say that the uh, dma has uh, just contributed a week's worth of uh, meals to that food trailer over in pine lake so that uh she'll be able to operate for another week uh, I think her check arrives tomorrow, and uh, she. How much was that check, Mayor? How much was the check? Seven thousand dollars. Well, expect a check from the cab because uh, she's doing a lot. Bill Floyd asked me about it, and uh, I'm the Lord. Let's follow up with Lakeitha. Uh We'll make a contribution as well. I think as of uh, today, she has fed about twenty five hundred lunches since March thirtieth. So that's that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, we'll support it too. Because Bill had mentioned it to him, and all the other crazy stuff started happening. Uh, but we'll make a contribution as well. Okay, that's that's great. That's great. Thank you. So thank you so much, Bill. Unless you got something else for me, boss. No, I think that's it, Mike. Thank you. We appreciate your time, you and Dolores. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. I want to thank John. Thank you all. all right. And Diamond thank Lewis. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Have a good night. You do. Thank you. See you all.